All right, guys, welcome back to Formula One drama. Max Verstappen and Red Bull themselves have officially responded to the drama at the end of the Brazilian Grand Prix on the radio between Verstappen and Checo Perez. But the story they're telling doesn't exactly check out when you look into the transcription of the radio. Very much in Twitter, your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Get like 300 subs yesterday. Let's keep on going. Firstly, the big news of the day before this. There's so much drama right now. I was going to do a video on this on its own, but we can't because this uh, Red Bull thing is just too spicy. Hulkenberg will join Kevin Magnussen as teammate at Haas next season. Mick Schumacher is officially gone. This is his announcement here. And honestly, this is pretty spicy stuff. So um, if we zoom in, this is going to be my last race with the Haas F1 team. I don't want to hide the fact that I am very disappointed about the decision not to renew our contract. Nevertheless, I like to think the team, etc, etc, those years have helped me. I realize how much I love this sport. It was at times bumpy, but I steadily improved, learned a lot, and now know for sure that I deserve a play place in Formula 1. This subject is anything but closed for me. Setbacks only make you stronger. My fire burns for Formula 1 and I will fight hard to return to the starting grid. I guess PTW has proved them wrong. I don't know about that, but if he did, if that is what it means, then um, it's a little bit spicy for, you know, these words for Haas. There's been some other spicy stuff from here. I think even Ralph Schumacher right, went on to say that he believes that Gunter Steiner wants to be the main character at Haas and wasn't happy with Schumacher getting more love than him and therefore he kicked him, which I don't really buy but it's still getting pretty heated. Do you agree with Mick Schumacher that he deserves a place in Formula 1? I think it's, um, you know, it's certainly up for debate. I can understand why they've gone for Hulkenberg. They want someone with a bit more experience, you know, probably can put it in the points marginally more often, right? Look, I think Schumacher was improving. I think that Mick probably, I don't know, if I was running Haas, I might have kept him around for another season. But um, still, there were, you know, the crashes and stuff definitely hurt Haas with the cost gap that they struggled to hit anyway, let alone with those mistakes coming through. So, look, difficult times for Mick. He's going to be gone from the grid next season. He may or may not return. He reckons he deserves to return. We think potentially a reserve driver's seat at, um, at Mercedes could be a possibility next season. And then with Audi probably taking over Salva Alfa Romeo for 2026 certainly, but potentially even from a naming perspective, it could be before that. There is a good chance that Mick Schumacher will get a spot in a couple of years' time, if not one year beyond 2023. So I'd like to see it. I think Mick Schumacher was a good part of the grid. Unfortunately, he's not at hand. And I do question what Haas's future really is. Are they building for the future here with Hulkenberg and Magnussen? Hulkenberg, you know, having had three years out of the sport. Yes, he's a reliable guy, but is he quite the Hulkenberg that he was a few years ago? I'm not necessarily so sure. And even many other drivers on the grid supporting him here, as Ocon says, it's only a matter of time until you come back. Perez says you'll be back soon as well. Even Felipe Massa says, keep strong and fight hard and you'll be back. So I thought some nice statements from these guys here. And even as Hulkenberg says in his tweet, I want to thank Gene Haas and Gunter Steiner for their trust, which I think was maybe the key thing missing from their relationship with uh, Mick Schumacher, which is where that relationship seemingly broke down. And there's been many talking points about this recently that even I think we saw back in Austin, Magnussen completed the race on only a couple of sets of tyres. Gene Haas was giving him a lot of credit and said, well, yeah, Mick Schumacher couldn't manage his tyres that well. So they've been looking for reasons to get rid of Mick, I think. And that now they have finally pulled the trigger. So let's go from one set of driver pairing drama because Magnussen and Hulkenberg had their moments back in the day as well. This is a pretty famous clip to another more well recent example of some driver drama between Sergio Perez and Max Verstappen. These are the words that we saw at the end of the Brazilian Grand Prix. Very spicy stuff and like Red Bull haven't had any time to rest on their laurels. Straight here into Abu Dhabi where the questions from the media are getting asked left, right and centre. Even Will Buxton was talking to Max Verstappen and even Joss Verstappen, his father and um, you know basically he was saying that well the abuse that was thrown at Max and Joss and their family was unacceptable. It's like Joss Verstappen talking about abuse being unacceptable. I don't know if that one fully checks out. This, though, is the official statement from Red Bull they come out with. Surprised, in a way, they did a full statement on this. I suppose they felt like they had to. And um, I'm not really sure it adds up, to be honest. Let's read through this. So, as a team, we made some mistakes in Brazil. We had not envisaged the situation that unfolded on the last lap, and we had not agreed a strategy for such a scenario before the race. Interesting, just because, you know, apparently Max told them well and truly what he was going to do. For whatever reason it was, we don't fully know this reason, whether it was Monaco, whether it was something else after, before, whenever, that he wasn't going to give any position back to Perez. He made that known before the race and they obviously hadn't really come to that full agreement or they just thought the Max would back out and wouldn't say what he said publicly over the radio to the entire world, which hasn't really gone down so well for either himself or Red Bull Racing. Regretfully, Max was only informed at the final corner of the request to give up position without all the necessary information being relayed. This is like pretty much 
not even true. I mean, I'll show you in a second here the fact that this really is rewriting history to a certain extent because it was very clear that when Max overtook Checo originally, maybe Max wasn't told originally give the position back. But I think it was implied, at least maybe said by GP, his engineer, when he overtook Checo, that, okay, chase down Alonso and Leclerc, and if you don't, then give the position back. And he was definitely told before the final corner. I'll show you proof of that in a second. This put Max, who has always been an open and fair team player, in a compromising position with little time to react, which was not our intention. So, you know, kind of shifting the blame from Verstappen onto his engineer for not telling him in time, onto GP. So, um, I mean, yeah, following the race, Max spoke openly and honestly, allowing for both drivers to resolve any concerns. I'm sure it's all sunshine and rainbows. The team accepts Max's reasoning. This is also quite interesting, kind of implying that Max can get away with whatever he wants. Team principal, Red Bull Racing CEO and number one driver Max Verstappen does what he wants. And, um, you know, when Max said after the race, is that clear with you guys? You know, are we, you know, you, do you hear me? Is that clear? It's almost like he's the boss, right? Whereas, uh, you know, you could argue maybe he is, maybe he is not. The conversation was a personal matter, etc. And then the second part is um, is talking about the, the online abusive behavior, which is totally understandable how, look, when stuff like this happens, people go way too rogue on Twitter and social media. It is how it is. Some people will just criticize Max fairly and reasonably. Some people will go way too far with all the threats and stuff that ridiculous people do. So I agree, people on that side need to do a better job. But the thing is, it's like, it's almost like teams do this nowadays. Something controversial happens, they get backlash for it, a certain percentage of those people say something ridiculous, and then the team can just deflect all criticism of the actions and just say, yeah, we need to clamp down on this online abuse and stuff, which is fair enough. But it's like, it seems to be a tactic to get around actually addressing the actual accusation in the first place, let's say. That's my perspective, at least. So that was the final paragraph. But I wanted to just share this. I'm not sure how much video I can share of this. I might have to like show a couple of screenshots. But basically, going into turn 10, GP was on the radio and basically had a chance to overtake Alonso. He didn't. And he was like, yeah, if we can't get Alonso, give the position back, basically. So it was very clear that it was before the final corner. And, you know, we don't, I don't know, and I haven't really heard the full radio for the last like 10 laps of the race. I'm not exactly sure what was being said lap by lap to Max. But just for this particular statement, he was told before the final corner, very explicitly, and Red Bull surely know that we have the radio comms. We can see this stuff. He was told before the final corner, if you don't get Alonso, give the position back to Checo. Perez was about four seconds behind, which look, he could have given that time back. We saw Hamilton do it back in Hungary to Bottas a few years ago with like an 11 second gap or something that he gave up in the final few corners. So Verstappen could have done it. He was told multiple times throughout the final few corners to do it. So I just don't understand the fact that Red Bull are basically putting the blame on GP, his engineer, and not Verstappen, despite the fact that the radio comms are very clear whose decision this was. Max, if we don't pass Fernando on uh, the exit of 12, can we let Checo through, please? Let Checo back through. Yeah, don't worry about the DRS, Max. Let Checo through. Let Checo through. Max, let Checo through, please. Max, what happened? I told you already last time, uh, you guys don't ask that again to me, okay? Are we clear about that? I gave my reasons and I stand by it. So what do you guys think about this, right? Like, it makes sense Red Bull are going to defend their number one driver and their, you know, team principal, Max Verstappen, right? But uh, yeah, still, I just find their statement kind of strange because we have the comms, we have the radio, we can see the timings, and you're going to say that he wasn't told until the final corner where abjectly that is not true. And uh, look, Perez was told a lot, right? And he was like, yeah, Max is going to let you by, etc., etc. Max was obviously told plenty of times, but uh, didn't do it, right? And it was his call not to do it, but it's like, you know, why can't Red Bull just say it as it is? I don't really understand. So uh, anyway, Anyway, Verstappen goes on to say, we spoke after the race. In hindsight, we should have done that beforehand, which um, I suppose is fair enough. But clearly Red Bull knew because Verstappen told them on the radio, hey, I told you the reason. I ain't doing this, whatever the reason is. So he'd obviously told them, but I guess they hadn't had the discussion with Perez or whatever. And, um, and then he goes on to talk about the online abuse, which is fair enough. But again, it's the same tactic, no, where you do something wrong, you get criticism, and then you deflect the blame by talking about the abuse. I don't know. Maybe that's just me being cynical. <laughs> Maybe that's just me being overly cynical. And it's not 
not just like it's Verstappen and Red Bull that are the only people that do this, but it just seems to be a common tactic nowadays. This was the full quote actually here from Verstappen. It was something that happened earlier in the season. Could be Monaco, maybe not. I already explained it in Mexico and the team agreed. In Brazil, I thought we were going to race. So this is the thing, because in Mexico, there was the thought that like, you know what, it may be Mexico the home race. If it's a 1-2 for Red Bull, why not let Perez through for the win? Because Verstappen's already won the championship at that point. So, um, you know, maybe he told them then like, no, there's no way I'm ever doing that. I'm never letting Perez through for whatever reason. And uh, he told them about that. And I guess he expected those reasons to be echoed in Brazil. And, um, you know, he thought they were just going to go racing there. Nothing had been said to me about a potential swap. It only came in on the last lap, which might be true, right? He might have only been told on the final lap. But um, he definitely was told before the final corner, which is uh, what we saw in that radio message. They should have known my response the week before. After the race, we put everything on the table and everything was resolved. In hindsight, we should have had that conversation earlier. What we learned is we have to be a little more open and communicate better. He also then criticizes the actions on social media. So yeah, intrigue to your thoughts in the comment section below. It makes sense what Red Bull have done, but um, but to me it's pretty in <laughs> But to me, it's pretty interesting that they're effectively trying to deflect all blame away from Verstappen, which may or may not have its desired result. Intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.